Welcome to Electro Online. Let's talk about the different kinds of binary star systems that we could see. Or, in some cases, we don't necessarily see them, but we can detect them in certain ways. Now, not all binary star systems have two stars to the system. Sometimes we call stars systems that have three or four stars, also binary star systems. Although recently, we've gotten kind of away from that, and so now we say that it's a system of three stars or a system of four stars, and typically binary star systems now more recently have been allocated to where we have just two stars in the system. The seven different kinds of the binary star systems that you can encounter are called optical binaries, visual binaries, eclipsing binaries, astrometric binaries, spectroscopic binaries, spectrum binaries, and contact binaries. Well, what are these? Well, first of all, the optical binaries are really not really binary star systems. They just appear to be a binary star system because from our vantage points, two stars may be very close together. The angle between them may be absolutely minute in the terms of maybe fractions of an arc second. And so they appear to be a binary star system. Sometimes we look out there and say, oh, look, that looks like a binary star system. But in essence, they're very far apart. They just appear to look like a binary star system. So we call them optical binaries. Now, visual binaries where we have actually do have a binary star system. And as we're taking photographs of them, over time, we can see one of the stars moving around the other star. So we can see that as time goes by, sometimes days, weeks, months, or years, depends upon how far they are apart, what their masses are, and how long it takes the one to go around the other, we can then take pictures and see indeed, yes, that is a binary star system. We have a visual picture of them, so we call them visual binaries. Sometimes we notice when we look at a star that the star on occasion the light of it dims and becomes bright again, dims, becomes bright again, and quite often the dimming is not equal when it happens twice in the orbit of one star around the other. We may not be able to distinguish the existence of a second star in any other way except realizing that when the one star moves in front of the other, typically the smaller one, which has a lower surface temperature, and therefore it doesn't give off as much light per unit area, it therefore dims the totality of light we receive from that binary star system, so we have a dimming period. Then when that small star moves behind the other star, instead of being next to it, when the star is next to it, we receive the light of both of the stars. When the small star moves behind the big star, then we have a little bit of dimming because we no longer see the light of the smaller star. We call that eclipsing binary because one star will eclipse the light of the other. The fourth one, astrometric binary, is where we actually detect the wobble, the movement of one star because of the presence of another one. We may not be able to see the second star, but we do see the wobbling of the first star, and so therefore we say there must be a binary star system because one star appears to be moving or revolving around something else that we can't see, but it must be there, so we call that an astrometric uh, binary. A spectroscopic binary is where we can actually detect the light shift, blue shift or the red shift, of one star moving around another star. If there uh, located in such a way that they do not move in front of one another, but we can still see the radial closing and opening velocities. We can measure those velocities and measure the blue shift and the red shift of one star as it goes around the other. We call those spectroscopic binaries. We also have binaries which are called spectrum binaries. The difference there is that we cannot see necessarily the blue shift or the red shift, but what we can see is that we have a spectrum that appears to have the indicators of two very different stars. And so we then separate those, saying oh, these lines belong to one star, the other lines belong to another star. So we can see that together they appear as one star, but we realize then because of the specific spectral class or spectral type they may be in, we see different um, lines in the spectrum at different intensities and therefore we can break them out and realize hey we have two stars there instead of one star and we call that the spectrum binary. And finally we have a type of star called a contact binary where the two stars that are very close together 
where one has gone through a different evolutionary stage than the other. Maybe one is already a white dwarf and the other one now has become a red giant so that the outer surface of the red giant becomes very close to the white dwarf which has a very strong gravitational pull when you get close to it and so some of the material gets pulled out of the big star onto the small star in such a way that they actually appear to make contact so we call them contact binaries. So those are the seven main types of binary star systems that we have and we'll talk more in detail about what they are and, and what we can learn from them by studying them in various ways. And that's how we know more about binary star systems.